Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I got another rant for you today. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel and keep on supporting it. Like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell so you get all the up to the minute updates. And also hit up all of our different social media platforms. Come on now, podcast at Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and come on now, pod on Twitter. As you can see, of the topic that we have going on now, it is the victim Angel Reese is back again. The victim, the victim, the victim, the victim, always the victim. She asks to be the villain, but then she becomes the victim. I have never seen someone that begs for attention so much. Maybe if you hadn't, I don't know, stopped playing with five games to go or six games to go and tried to finish your season, who knows? Maybe your team would have made the playoffs. It's a possibility. It would have been out of the playoffs by now because the New York Liberty would have beat y'all in two, but at least you would have got there. But now she's on this new victimization i am the victim i am the victim i am the victim this is what angel reese angel reese was going on today on twitter about her victimization card because that's what she's living in the world of everyone everyone's doing it to me everyone is against me everyone is attacking me and, and, and this all goes back into her podcast i'm gonna read a few of the i'm gonna show you a few of these ridiculous tweets um that even I responded to, and I'm sure I'll end up getting blocked, but I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. <clears throat> Let's talk about this real fast. Angel Reese decides to have surgery on her wrist when she could have played the last couple of weeks of the season to see if her team could get to the playoffs. Guess what happened today? Her coach got fired. Her coach got fired. Teresa Weatherspoon got fired. That is right. She got fired. And you know what happens when you get fired for doing stuff that basically is a matter of, you know, you, you, you should have, I don't know, not try to pad stats. You try to play the game the right way um, and play it the way it's supposed to be played instead of trying to puff up numbers that don't belong puffy. No diddy. But uh, did that even sound right? I don't know. But anyhow, let's talk about this here. This is what Angel Reese said today. And she was going on one today for real, for real, for real. Ugh. Let's zoom this in a little bit. Yeah, I replied. I, I had to reply because I'm this nonsense. It's just ridiculous. For the past two years, the media has benefited from my pain and me being villainized to create a narrative the media how has the media benefited from your pain who I, I, I mean please do tell I would love to know how the media has benefited from your pain you asked to be the villain you said I wow I will take I love I, I am the villain I will take on that role you made that call and now you don't like that role the media allowed this this was beneficial to them I sometimes share my experiences of things that have happened to me, but I also allow them that this to happen to me for way too long. And now other players in the league are dealing with and experiencing the same things. Obviously she's referring to the Alyssa Thomas boo hoo session last night where she says that she doesn't want Caitlin Clark fans, which basically means you don't want Caitlin Clark in your league. And of course, painting this narrative that I don't know of the, 10 million Caitlin Clark fans. I'm just throwing out a number that 999, 9 point, I'm sorry, 9.999999 million are all racist. That's the narrative they want to push. Now even Brittany Griner today is talking about being slurred at. You know, the NBA players get fans who do those things thrown out of buildings every game. If that happens. So this newfound thing where, well, these women are all just being slurred on the court. Oh, stop it. Why are you lying? Why are you making up stories? People don't buy tickets to get thrown out of the building. Now, if you want to talk about social media, no one can control social media. There are millions of trolls out there on both sides of the aisle. 
Reese fans who are trolls, Clark fans who are trolls, and anybody else fans who are trolls. There are lots of trolls. The WNBA cannot control what people post on social media. The WNBA cannot control what they po- they, they say, say they say publicly. The, the, the Indiana Fever cannot control what is said by people on social media. But this is what this she says, this isn't okay at all. Well, by the way, wasn't it the fan of the Connecticut Sun yesterday who referred to Caitlin Clark as a C-U-N-T? That's the report. And he did not get thrown out of the building, by the way. Just so you know, he did not get thrown out. He was talked to and later on seen sitting right back in his damn seat. Probably told if you say that stuff again, you're going to be gone. But of course, he's already said it. So, hey, guess what? You can sit here because you're wearing a lanyard that says you're a VIP. Hell, I remember when I, I think Jimmy Buffett got kicked out of a Miami Heat game years ago. Like, what are we doing here? Like, th- th- this stuff is insane. NBA players have managed to play in this league for so long, and rarely do you have these types of issues. But apparently, it happens on a daily basis when dealing with the alphabet community in the WNBA and Angel Reese. Anything beyond criticism about playing the game we love is wrong. Well, I've never I've criticized you for your lack of lack of basketball skill. I've criticized you for the things that you have said in reference to basketball. I criticize you for things that you have done that impact your basketball game. Like creating a podcast in the middle of a season which impacts your ability to practice and focus on your craft. Just so happens that the next day you were injured and you decided to call it quits for the season and you could not take the fact that you were no longer front and center press. You should have known that was going to happen when you decide you're not going to play because guess what? Nobody cares about you if you're not playing until you go on Twitter and tell the world you're a victim. I'm sorry to all the players that have con- have, con- have and continue to experience the same things I have. This is why I started my podcast. To take my voice back and create the narrative of who I really am. Well, we don't know who you are. We know that you don't like black men. One, because you sure as hell shared a video and like reposted a video of a black woman basically disparaging black men. So you don't like black men and you agree with her on that. We know that you don't want to date anyone under six foot seven. So you're looking for an NBA player who happens to be white, I guess. I guess because you voiced in a repost that you don't like black men. You so you you subscribe to that, correct? To take my voice back and create the narrative of who I really really am. At the end of the day, I don't want an apology, nor do I think this will ever stop, but something has changed. I don't know. Let's let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about that for a second. Hey, you like that title? Dirtbag Dijonet? Yeah, liar in her response. We all know she lied. You know how things change? Is when people start acting human to other people. That's how things change. Things change when players are not constantly throwing pot shots at other players. Things change when people don't show next levels of jealousy and hate towards their colleagues. Do you know the difference of how people would react to Angel Reese in a grander scheme or even Dijanae Carrington? or even Alyssa Thomas, or even Asia Wilson, or even Diana Taurasi, although she's gone now, so we won't have to worry about seeing her anymore. But you know how people respond to things when clearly the vast majority of the people watching the WNBA right now are actually Caitlin Clark fans and not your fans because you don't really have any fans, or your fan level is in, in you know, <laughs> tiny <laughs> compared to 
her fan base. So what exactly do you do? Instead of being an asshole at every given possibility, instead of being this playing this role of victim at every given possibility, you actually embrace and be a polite human being. As I said in my other video on Alyssa Thomas, Caitlin Clark has been the target of pot shots and barbs and disrespect from people in the basketball community for the entire season. Okay? The entire season. She's dealt with it from Kennedy Carter, Asia Wilson, Becky Hammond, Diana Taurasi, Cheryl Swoops, Monica McNutt, Chinia Gumake, Drea Carter, Carolyn Peck. Like, I, I can continue to name people who have outwardly spoken negatively for one reason or another about Caitlin Clark. Heck, I can swear that I heard Brianna Stewart say some not flattering stuff. And it's always sideways. It doesn't specifically ever name her, but it's sideways commentary. And, of course, Angel Reese herself. Cheryl Reeve. Like, Dawn Staley. Like there's it, the list goes on and on and on, and those are the only the big names. And yet, with all that vitriol that she has faced from her contemporaries and her colleagues and people that you would think would be welcoming her to the league, they spit out hate against her. So you know what happens? You have fans of hers who feel the need to defend her because guess what? Caitlin Clark does not verbally defend herself. She has a gift of ignoring the same noise that all these other women are whining about now, complaining about now. Noise largely created from their attitudes towards Caitlin Clark because Caitlin Clark has not said one negative thing about any single one of them, including the piece of trash on fucking Connecticut who I gouged her on Sunday, who then said that she had no idea what happened. She did not know that she did it, but yet she still did not apologize for jabbing her fingers into this woman's eye. Which is why we know it's all bull crap. I am so tired of hearing people cry victimization when the large reason that this stuff is going on at this point is because the nastiness from her own colleagues. Shoot, her own teammate who was clearly a cooperating agent of the Connecticut Sun in Melissa Smith, who today herself put a long tweet to tell the world about her season. We all know she's gone at the end of the after you know in the off season. We know it. Go to Connecticut. Go go be with your girlfriend. It is just an absolute utter joke that the people complaining and voicing these things always voice the same crap. But yet we've not seen a fan thrown out of one single building this season until almost yesterday in a playoff game. Oh, by the way, a playoff game that drew over almost drew an average of 2.5 million viewers, a record for the WNBA, and, and at a peak of 3.4 million viewers. This game drew 3 million viewers on a Wednesday night. And imagine if that game had been on ABC. Imagine. Imagine if it had been on ABC. Like, come on, man. What happened here? Folks, God is telling me that I need a, folks, God is telling me that I need a new computer.
because <laughs> the last two days have been choppy to say the least in terms of the recording quality and i apologize for that so let's continue real quick so now we have this tweet where angel reese says Y'all know I've been going through this for the last two years, but was told save the tears and stop playing victim. Y'all a little late to the party and could have tried to put out this fire way before it started. Who, who was going to put out this fire? You were in college a year ago. Hell, you were in college five months ago. Five months ago, you were in college. What the hell are we talking about? You were in college five months ago. So who exactly was going to put out the flames that you started by being a complete and utter ass clown in the national championship game in, in April of 2023? You created this situation. Nobody had any problem with you until you decided to do this two inches from someone else's face. Chase them around the court after the game is over rather than celebrate with your teammates. I, I mean, and now we have this. This is the next tweet. I never in my life had the privilege, but now I definitely know the power I have through my platform. And you have no power in your platform. Your platform exists because of basketball. If you stop playing basketball tomorrow, sorry, nobody's going to care about you, Angel Reese. I know you really believe that they will, and I know you believe that you're a model, and I know that you believe that you're going to be in movies and acting. All your endorsements are because of basketball, and that's cool. But stop acting like you have some platform that people really care about. That didn't come overnight. I grew that on my own. With that being said, I will continue to use my voice in the right way and say what's right, even though it has backfired on me to be this villain. I won't stop. You asked to be the villain. You requested that. You requested that. And then we get the last tweet. Oh, Lord have mercy. This last one is another comedy. It's another comedy in itself. I'm heartbroken. I'm literally lost for words knowing what this woman meant to me in such a pivotal point in my life. She was the only person that believed in me. Are you serious? So your mom didn't believe in you? So Kim Mulkey didn't believe in you? So your teammates at LSU didn't believe in you? The one that trusted me. Many don't even know what it's like to be a black woman in sports when nobody believes in you. You had a tough job. I mean, oh, God, the victim. She's the, she's even the victim in, an, in, in, in a tweet that's supposed to be saying thank you to Teresa Weatherspoon. Angel Reese is an expert. She's an expert at making herself the victim, even when the it's not supposed to be about her. All the crazy circumstances that we went through this year, and when your back was against the wall, you always believed I came to Chicago because of you. <laughs> Angel Reese, you were drafted to Chicago. If someone else had drafted you, you wouldn't have been in Chicago. You didn't choose Chicago. Chicago chose you. So no, you didn't go to the Chicago because of Teresa Weatherspoon. Because if you could have gone to the Las Vegas Aces, one might think that you would have loved that opportunity probably a little bit more. Or the New York Liberty, you would have liked that one even more. You were an unsung hero in my life. We built a relationship in sh a short amount of time that will last forever. I'll never question God why he brings people in my life and takes them away from me in that capa in the capacity that I need them. But I've always believed everyone is in your life for a reason and a season. 
You were the best reason and season. You didn't deserve this, but I can't thank you enough. I love you, Teaspoon. Are you laughing? I'm laughing. Internally, I am cackling in laughter right now. Angel, she got fired in large part because she bought into the padding of stats. While no one else was interested, interested in the Chicago sky, she tried to keep your numbers fluffed. She left you in games that you shouldn't have been in. She tried to feed you the ball when she shouldn't have. She fluffed up your numbers. She ruined Camila Cardoso this year to the benefit of you. And then at the end, the reports are that although the players were very supportive of Teresa Weatherspoon and like her, there was a disconnect in the locker room because of her. What does that tell you? That means that things that she did pissed off a whole bunch of players and made and and get, and put and put the team in a position where they had no cohesion. They were not connected. There was no chemistry. Marina Mabry gets traded mid-year and now is playing in the semifinals. Dana Evans demanded a trade. He didn't trade her and then she got benched. Her agent starts talking on social media about what's going on there. It's a toxic environment. And all of it, circ it was circled around you. But I'm going to go back to what I said before. It would be so easy for these women to be accepting and welcoming. But instead, they've chosen to be everything else but accepting and welcoming and i don't want to hear you say that caitlin and i are cool i don't want to hear it you know how you'll show it instead of inviting cheryl swoops on your podcast you should be inviting caitlin clark now that the season is over you should be inviting caitlin clark and you and caitlin clark should chop it up for an hour or two or three. And maybe you should learn a little bit about Caitlin Clark and what Caitlin Clark has had to deal with. And I know it sounds crazy, but as a white girl in a predominantly black sport and the type of garbage that she's had to deal with inside the sport. While black women may have to deal with crap outside the sport, Inside the sport, it's a black sport. And that's fine. Just like the NBA is a black sport now. And has been for many years. But anytime there's a good white boy out there, people are like, oh my God, that white boy can play. It's the assumption that the white guy can't play basketball or that the white girl can't play basketball or all that either of them can do is shoot the ball. When in fact, you have people like her teammate, Kennedy Carter, who said, well, all she can do is shoot, except for the fact that she led the WNBA in assists and broke 62 records, I, I think I've read. 62? Either WNBA records or rookie records. But your own teammate said all she can do is shoot. So maybe you should invite Caitlin Clark onto your show, your podcast, your platform, the one that you claim is so great. I mean, you invited Cheryl Swoop, so you can, I'm sure you and her chopped it up. I haven't seen it. I might watch it because I'm just curious to see if Cheryl Swoop's dogs out Caitlin Clark again. But I'd, I'd love to see you invite her. Because the fact of the matter is, y'all blame her for the behavior of adults and kids around the country who happen to be fans of hers. And that's not fair. The same way it's not fair for anyone to blame you for the behavior of your fans and the ones who spew out slurs 
all the time. Both fans, both sets of fans are guilty of the same thing. But let's not act like it's the vast majority of them. It's a small minority. And yet, Alyssa Thomas is going to cry on a screen. You're going to cry on the screen when you ask to be the villain. Your own teammate from LSU doesn't mess with you anymore because we all know. But hey, there's your Angel Reese victim story again. She's the victim. She's always the victim. And even when she's not the victim and the, the, the story's not about her, she still makes herself the victim. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm sorry for this. It might be a little choppy on this video, but I hope it comes out okay because I had some internet issues just now. And I don't want to record the whole damn thing all over again. So I hope it looks all right. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell. Come on now.